and welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. On this fifth Sunday of Easter, we will be celebrating communion, and so I would encourage all of you to stop the video and find some, something that you can use for the elements, some bread, some wine, some toast, some coffee, grape juice, whatever you might have, and then restart the video so that you too can participate in communion. Leading worship today will be Helen McKinnon Bagnell and her husband Ron Bagnell. Our psalmist is Kathy Berry. Our organist, choir director, pianist is David Berry. And I am the Reverend Susan Brazier. Please join me in the call to worship. Jesus the Christ said, I am the Good Shepherd. We have come to follow him. We gather in the name of the one who leads us by still waters. We have come to be restored in him. We gather in the name of the one who has prepared the banquet for us. We have come to be fed by his love. So let us worship God. Join me in the prayer of approach. Lead us, creation's architect, into all those places where we will discover your hope, waiting to nourish and restore our famished souls. Lead us, shepherd of children, into all those places where we have the joy of filling the emptiness of others with your goodness. Lead us, spirit of goodness, into all those places where deeds of kindness and hands overflowing with mercy speak louder than platitudes. bow our heads. God of abundant life, your grace is our daily bread. Nourish us by your word and fill us with your spirit so that we may grow in faith and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 40, 
verses 6 to 11. A voice said, shout. I asked, what should I shout? Shout that the people are like the grass. Their beauty fades as quickly as the flowers in a field. The grass withers and the flowers fade beneath the breath of the Lord. And so it is with people. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. O Zion, messenger of good news, shout from the mountaintops. Shout it louder, O Jerusalem, shout and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. So ends the reading of God's holy word.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'm not certain when I started to develop a theology of food. I find that I pause when I come across random meals in Bible stories. I wonder about who prepared them, who served them, where and when and for what purpose. We often overlook a meal as if it were nothing more than stage dressing to a larger story, such as when God and the two angels come to Abraham to remind him that Sarah, his wife, at the age of 90, will have a baby and will be the mother of nations. Underlying that story is the preparation and the presentation of a great banquet. Or, or when the woman anoints Jesus with the oil from the alabaster jar, it was at a meal. Perhaps I developed this interest in these food stories because in my former life as a mother of teenage boys, I spent so much of my waking hours struggling to prepare sufficient sustenance. They and their friends ate a lot. Or, or maybe it comes from the wonderful fellowship I've had and I've shared with family and friends as we prepare and enjoy meals. Communion, also called the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, the Eucharist, or if you're from a Catholic background, the Mass, is central to my ponderings about God and about food and about our relationship with God. While small details differ, all the biblical accounts of the Lord's Supper contains the image that Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. I'm always pulled up short when I encounter a biblical passage that speaks of bread being blessed, broken, and shared. Random, obscure passages, such as Abraham's encounter with the high priest Melchizedek in Genesis 14, verse 18. The high priest serves Abraham a blessing, bread, and wine. Or, or better yet, how about at the end of Acts, when in the middle of an account of a shipwreck, Paul takes bread, he gives thanks to God in front of everyone, then he broke it, and he encouraged his companions to join him in eating. We will see the same motif in this morning's gospel lesson found in Mark chapter 6, verses 34 through 44. Listen now for the word of God. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place and the hour is very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, You, you give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we to go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Uh, go and see. When they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. He then ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and he blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered 5,000 men. This is a word of God for the people of God. In this story from the Gospel of Mark, the author describes the crowd as sheep without a shepherd. So Jesus tends to them. He teaches them. He has them sit down in green pastures. He feeds them so lavishly that not only is everyone full, but there are doggy bags to take home. Twelve baskets full. 
And again, this motif of blessing, breaking, and giving. It is exactly the language we encounter at the Last Supper. In Mark's account of the feeding of the 5,000, we see the fulfillment of Isaiah 40, verse 11, that Helen read for us. Yes, the Sovereign Lord is coming. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. Here, Jesus takes this human flock, the crowd that is described as lost sheep without a shepherd, and guides them to green pastures. Color seldom appears in scripture. For example, the word green is only mentioned five times in the entire New Testament. For me, there is no mistake that the author of Mark was demonstrating that Jesus is a fulfillment of the image of the Good Shepherd that we cling to in the 23rd Psalm. Even though Jesus and his disciples are in need of rest themselves, Jesus, ever the Good Shepherd, takes care of the crowd, teaching them the word of life and feeding them the bread of heaven. So these meals that we trip over in the Bible stories and their resemblance to the Last Supper cause me to wonder about the very nature of the Holy Communion. Throughout the ages, Christians have held different understandings of this most holy meal. The Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, Communion, the Eucharist. For example, the ecumenical body, the World Council of Churches, lists seven different Christian theological interpretations of this meal. First, Thanksgiving. The word Eucharist actually means Thanksgiving in Greek. Second, a memorial of Christ, a, a time to remember Jesus. Third, the sacrifice of Jesus who intercedes on our behalf. Fourth, the body and blood of Christ, the sacrament of the very real presence of Jesus. Fifth is an invitation of the Holy Spirit to come and be with us, the Celtic notion of thin space between heaven and earth happens at the table. Six, we have a symbol of the unity of all believers. And finally, it is interpreted as a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. Depending on your religious upbringing, you probably gravitate to one of these images, perhaps more than another. I would not be a bit surprised if some of these images might be completely new to you. A beloved friend of mine here in New Brunswick is an Anglican priest. For him, the elements of the Lord's Supper, the, the bread and the wine, are the literal body and blood of our Lord and Savior. For me, I am particularly partial to the image of the meal as being a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. One evening, when I made reference to communion as snacks in church, my friend was absolutely horrified and proclaimed that I was sacrilegious and a heretic. He was truly, deeply distressed. The idea that communion could be viewed as bread for the journey of life struck him as strange and odd, completely outside of his training or, and his comfort zone. One or more of these seven images may strike you like it did my friend as completely strange and unknown. But Jesus is the Good Shepherd. He finds us lost, like the crowd in our Gospel account this morning. He takes us in just as we are, lost and hungry, and he cares for us beside still waters and with green pastures. He stays with us and feeds us in all the ways that we need. Whatever our religious upbringing or our theological orientation, there is room for all of us at the Lord's table. No one way of experiencing or understanding the meal is better than another. Have you ever wondered about the verse in the 23rd Psalm? He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The one thing I am certain of is that God will feed our enemies too. It is in coming together at the table that we set aside our differences and we build friendships. For me, the imagery of any particular communion service really depends on where I am 
in my faith walk. Jesus provides us what we need for where we are, even if we are lost in a desolate place in our lives with nothing to sustain us but five small barley loaves and two tiny fish that we are supposed to share with 5,000 or more of our closest friends. In Jesus, there will always be enough. That is a part of the image of the Lord's Supper as a unifying meal. So, this brings me back to my theology of food and stumbling across images of the Eucharist in other scripture texts. The blessing, the breaking, the serving of bread. Just as I find depiction of the Lord's Supper echoed in unexpected places in our holy texts, I also make note when I find communion elements in odd locations or unexpected times. Before the pandemic, when we used to do this thing of eating in a restaurant, some of you may recall this most pleasant of activities of our former lives, my husband and I would go out to dinner and occasionally at the end of the meal as a server was cleaning up the plates, sometimes we would find ourselves sitting there with a few pieces of bread and a partially filled glass of wine. At these moments, sitting in the presence of these ordinary foodstuffs, just a few scraps of bread and remnants of unfinished wine, I remember the Eucharist. Do this in remembrance of me. A quiet invitation to a holy meal served in the most ordinary of places. God meets us right where we are and feeds us exactly what we need at that moment. Come. He prepares a table before us. Our cup overflows. This is what heaven tastes like. Amen. This is a joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, to sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. May the God of green pastures be with you. And also with you. Beloved, still your hearts before God. We open them to the one who fills them with living water. Children of God, give thanks for the sake of God's name. Our praise is continually offered to our heart, our shepherd, and our Savior. Imaginative shepherd, into the bitterness of chaos you poured pools of living water. Into cracks of nothingness you filtered dirt, seeds, and nutrients so that lush pastures of life might emerge. You carved paths of beauty and wonder for those who would bear your image to walk. But we long to follow sin and death all the days of our lives, and so turned away from you. You gave your rod and your staff to prophets, trusting that their words might anoint us with healing. Yet we only found comfort in seductions, all too false promises. So, in the presence of these enemies we did not recognize, you sent Jesus to be that grace and hope which we needed, even if we didn't want them. With those assembled in this place and time, with those whose love is shown in their actions, we gather as your people, singing your praise and our thanksgiving. Holy, holy, holy are you, good shepherd of all peoples. Still waters, green pastures, sparkling stars join all creation in praising you. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comforts us. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, yet compassionate, God of our hearts, and your good shepherd Jesus 
comes to save us. When we would wander the deserts of sin, he leads us to the green pastures of grace. When we turn down wrong roads towards foolishness, he takes our hands and shows us the right path. When we are tossed about by life, he brings us to the still waters of your gentleness. Walking through the darkest valley, he surrendered to the cold embrace of death until you brought him out of the grave, anointing him with the oil of resurrection. As we would join the goodness and mercy in following the Good Shepherd all the days of our lives, we celebrate that mystery we call faith. Christ died walking through death's valley. Christ was raised, the Good Shepherd for us all. Christ will come to bring all into the one flock of God. You have prepared this table for us, anointing this bread and cup, as well as your people with the Holy Spirit. May this bread which is broken be our healing and strength. So we walk the shadows of our world, leading our sisters and brothers down paths of healing and hope. As we are anointed with the cup's grace, may we bring comfort to the lonely, build homes for those who have none, fill the hungry with nourishing food, shower them with goodness and mercy. And when there are no more shadows around us, when your rod of reconciliation and your staff of salvation gather us around the table, prepare for us in eternity, we will join all from every time and place, singing your praises with glad voices. Until then, we will pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in unity with your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.